Without further ado, I'd like to hand off my mic to our first 2017 MESPA Speaks presenter. From Sand Creek Elementary in Coon Rapids, please welcome Principal Paul Anderson. Good morning, everybody. Have you ever wondered what we would do if we weren't elementary principals? On a recent commute home, a video billboard caught my attention when it uh, flashed this question. And because it was one of my more eventful days at Sand Creek, uh, and because I'm not rule of 90, and I'm looking at many years left in this profession, I think I responded with a yes and a lot of enthusiasm. And I spent the rest of my drive home considering my options. But are there any options? I mean, would or could our skill set ever transfer outside of education? And again, I answer, yes. All right, if you came here for rich, deep, meaningful content, stay tuned, because those seven that are speaking next are going to provide that to you. <laughs> Me, I just want to take a moment and share with you four jobs that I think our skill sets transfer very nicely to. And I know that you have similar stories from your experience, probably even better ones than mine. Uh, but what I want to do today is validate the enormous amount of skills that you show on a daily basis. So let's get started. I think that we all could be very good authors. I know there, is, there are some authors in this audience. But I also think we should, be, we should be regular guests on the talk show circuit, all right? Every week I find myself saying, I really should be writing this stuff down. It may, <laughs> It would make such a great book. And if I'm honest, Jimmy Fallon and Ellen, they're missing out if they have not tapped into the elementary school principal for content. And Ellen, if you're watching, I am available. All right? <laughs> Love to be on that show. But uh, I, I must say, uh, here's an example of some of the stuff we deal with. We have great material as elementary principals. Just the other day, a uh, first grader was walking into the school, a little girl. And I had my coffee cup in hand and welcoming all the students. And she came right up to me and she said, Mr. Anderson, is that hot chocolate? And I said, no, that's, that's my morning cup of coffee. And she said, well, you know what my dentist said? Coffee stains your teeth. <laughs> and before I could even respond, she said, open up, let me see them. <laughs> you can't make up some of the stuff we deal with with kids. We've got great material as elementary principals, and it's that material, it's those little moments and those little exchanges with our students that remind us to find joy in this work, to smile, to laugh, and to have fun. Because it's the kids, after all, which is why we do this work. All right, if uh, we weren't that, I think we would make really good criminal defense attorneys, all right? <laughs> now, Stick with me here. In this next dramatization, I've actually changed the names to protect the guilty and the innocent. And I've chosen the esteemed names of our president and president-elect. Isn't it true, Mark, that on the afternoon of today, that uh, the alleged perpetrator of this supposed kick to your head was, in fact, actually in line behind you waiting for her turn on the spiral tube slide? And isn't it also true, Mark, that prior to getting to the end of the tube slide, you willingly and knowingly chose to stop halfway down? Now, Mr. French, <laughs> isn't it logical that poor Nancy's foot uh, might have just accidentally hit your head because of your willful clogging of this tube slide, which you know we frown upon here at the creek? <laughs> I rest my case. Yeah. Another job I think we could do really well at would be crisis negotiators. And more specific with this example I'm about to share would be hostage negotiators. <laughs> Stick with me here. Let me set the scene. It's minutes after the opening bell and you're patrolling the kindergarten hallway, which has become an annual tradition uh, during that first week of school. And you're looking for students, most likely parents, who are having trouble with separation. <laughs> and you come across what we in the business known as the lingering mom, who's probably engaged in like the fourth or fifth reassuring hug to her firstborn pride and joy. And you just love to walk up to her and say, ma'am, I'm gonna need you to let go of and step away from the five-year-old, all right? It's time for you to go. <laughs> I think that topic is worth exploring next year at Mespa Speaks if principals actually said what we were thinking, <laughs> all right? 
Maybe MESPA speaks after dark, uh, the uncensored version. But we don't do that. Instead, we do enter very emotional and very important situations on a daily basis. And we do so by staying calm, by assessing the dynamics, by listening, and by choosing our words carefully. Because we know that as principals, the way we react and respond to difficult uh, conversations and difficult situations is critical uh, to the success and a successful outcome. All right, finally, if we weren't elementary principals, I'm pretty sure we would all have a future in the world of BMX, all right? I'm talking about the bikes, all right, or skateboards, all right, pick your poison. And a little disclaimer, I don't, I'm not saying that anybody in this room has the physical ability to be in that world, all right? <laughs> the thought of some of you in there is just scary. <laughs> I mean, picture, picture Miller Hagen on a skateboard entering that, all right? <laughs> That has emergency room written all over it. But, and ticket sales. And, and ticket sales. Now you threw me off, Roger. And you also stole some material that I'll get to later, all right? But this is a skills park, all right? And it's complete with ups and downs and ins and outs and obstacles that we have, or that the rider has to uh, try to overcome. And before you enter that, you have to have a plan and you have to have a sequence and you have to know which maneuvers to try, when and where. But once you drop in, all bets are off. And you have to be flexible and adaptive. And uh, you have to do that during the entire run. Like if on your first jump, you don't think you're going to get enough air for that signature 1080 backside toe flip. I don't even think that's a term. <laughs> <coughs> you might just have to land the 720 with a front side kick grab. Is that a term? I don't know. My point is, is in this environment, you have to think on your feet, and you have to react quickly, and you have to be constantly adapting. Minnesota principals, may I present that we do this every single day. We drop into a day in the life of our school, and we navigate the ins and the outs and the ups and the downs, but our obstacles weren't there when we started the day. They just like pop up out of nowhere without any notice. We can start the day with a clear head in our office with our Google Calendar, and then minutes before the bell, while our coffee is brewing in the Keurig, a parent can walk in and want to vent to us. And bam, we've got to readjust. And then we come out of our office from that conversation, and a little kindergartner, cute as a button, is here to read a story that she wrote for me, or for us, over the weekend. And we've got to do a complete 180. We've got to shake off the stress of that. And we've got to smile and give her some genuine enthusiasm and give her that moment with us that she was wanting. And that's what we do all day. We approach each, each expected task and all of those unexpected challenges with a different set of specific skills. But at the end of the day, the question of if we were in elementary principles is irrelevant because we are. And this last part, I actually rewrote last night. And I rewrote it because of my experience this week. On Wednesday, uh, some principals between the lunch and uh, the keynote were coming up to the podium and they were telling a little bit about themselves. And I heard three things that were said. I am fortunate enough to be the principal at, I am lucky to be the principal at, and I get to be the principal at. What a profound statement that that is uh, our belief about our work and, and the work that we do with kids every single day. Uh, Mark mentioned that at the board meeting on Wednesday, everybody had to go around and share a word about how we were feeling, and my word was grateful. And it's because coming to Winter Institute and connecting with people who know what it's like to be a principal and what it sounds like and looks like and feels like, that's a gift. And I always go away with a renewed sense of energy and passion for my work when I go back to Sand Creek, which is a school that I get to be leader of. And despite the challenges and all of the uh, responsibilities and unpredictability of this job, like Rogers always told us, it is good to be a Minnesota principal. And finally, what other career would we want? What other job would we want? Like Principal Caffelli said, this is our mission. And furthermore, we chose this mission, we believe in this mission, and we love this work because we are principals. Thank you. Thank you.